This entire live stream is going to be about St. Benedict medals. So what even is a St. Benedict medal? Well, this is a St. Benedict medal. It is a medal with St. Benedict, who was the patron saint of basically uh, Western monasticism, um, as well as Western civilization. And he was a, he founded the Benedictine monks and wears a black habit and is their father uh, of the Benedictine. So this medal is a St. Benedict medal and every word on here has to do with something in Latin. So I am just going to go straight into what a St. Benedict medal is, how to use it, and how to get one and get one blessed. So for this metal to be used, these metals have to be properly blessed and exercised. I've seen many priests who make the sign of the cross over these metals and say, it's done. Yes, priests do have the authority to bless things and say the sign of the cross is powerful, but there was no correct form or words in order to make it a valid blessing and exorcism. Therefore, this does not exercise them. So I'm doing this um, to, for it to be used as a reference for priests and laymen alike to carry around validly exercised and blessed medals. So take note, only a validly ordained priest can validly do this. Um, it used to be just Benedictine priests, but it has been extended to any priest. Um, doesn't matter. And he has to be a validly ordained priest, and he can do it. He does not know how to pronounce it in Latin, although Latin is more efficacious. All he has to know how to do is use holy water and do the sign of the cross over it, and the priest can validly exercise these. The medal um, of St. Benedict. So medals, crosses, rosaries, statues, etc., have been long used as a means to foster and express devotions to God, and saints, icons, and painted images of Christ are especially popular, in especially in Eastern Christianity. And the use of any religious article is therefore intended to remind us of God and show our willingness and desire to serve God and our neighbor. With this understanding, we reject any use of religious articles as if they're charms or have magic or anything like this. Th this is not magic. This is not a charm. So this is God's power, God's authority. So for early Christians, the cross was a favorite symbol and badge of Christ. From the writings of St. Gregory the Great, we know that St. Benedict had a deep faith in the cross and worked many miracles with the sign of the cross. This faith and special devotion to the cross was passed to his succeeding generations of Benedictines. Devotions to the cross of Christ also gave rise to the striking of these medals, which um, show him holding um, a cross and his role, the regula, which is the monastic role that Benedictines follow. Um, so he's holding a cross, and he's holding for the rule of monasteries, or just the regula, that um, in his other hand. So in the course of time, other additions were made, such as the Latin petition on the margin, asking that St. Benedict's presence, we may be strengthened at the hour of death. And I will explain this later. We do not know when the first medal was, was created. At, at some point of history, a series of capital letters was placed on around the large figure of the cross and on the reverse side and for a long time the meaning of these letters was unknown but in 1647 a manuscript dating from 1415 was found at the abbey of uh, Metin in Bavaria giving an explanation of these letters so the these are all the initials to a latin exorcism prayer which is very cool so this is the Jubilee Medal of Monte Cassino. Monte Cassino was the first monastery and the main one that um, St. Benedict uh, founded. And um, the above features were initially incorporated into the newly designed medal struck in 1880 under the supervision of the monks in Monte Cassino, Italy, to mark the 1400th anniversary of the birth of St. Benedict. This design of this medal was produced at St. Martin's Arch Abbey in 
Buren, in Germany at the request of the prior of Monte Cassino. Um, and since that time, the Jubilee Medal of 1880 has been proven more popular throughout the Christian world than any other medal ever struck to honor St. Benedict. And as you can see at the very bottom, there are some numbers. This is the casting date. It says Mon uh it has the casting date, and I'll, I will explain that in a second. So because the Jubilee Medal of 1880 has the important features, the following description that I'm going to give um, has to do with the, the most recent and the most concise um, casting of this medal. So we're going to go with the front. So the front of the medal... On the face is St. Benedict. He holds the cross in his right hand, the Christian symbol of salvation. The cross reminds us of the zealous work of evangelizing and evangelizing England and Europe carried out by the Benedictine monks and nuns, especially in the 6th to 9th and 10th centuries. Um, in his left hand, he has the rule for monasteries, which could be summed up in the words, um, to walk in God's ways with the gospel as our guide, as he would say. And this is the regular that all Benedictines have to follow. So that little booklet. So the cross and the booklet. And on the right, in this pedestal, there is a cup, a chalice, that he shattered because um, St. Benedict was a very strict monk, and some of his monks wanted to kill him because he they thought he was too strict. So they put poison into a cup, and what St. Benedict did was he went like this over it, and it shattered because of the power of God. So that's why he's seen depicted with a cup around him. And then, um, and then on the other side is a raven about to carry away a loaf of poisoned bread that an enemy had sent to St. Benedict. So St. Benedict is highly um, effective against getting rid of poison. So he's somebody that can really assist us if we have any type of poison, food poisoning, uh, any type of other poison. The CSPB, which stands for Crux Sancti Patris Benedicti, the cross of our Holy Father Benedict, right there, Crux S. Patris Benedicti, Holy Cross of Our Father Benedict, and that is in uh, in here. And on the margin of the medal, encircling the figure, are the Latin words, uh, starting here, Eus in obitu nostro presentia muneamor, uh, may we be strengthened by his presence in the hour of our death, and Benedictines have always regarded St. Benedict as a special patron of a happy death. He himself died in the chapel, the chapel of Monte Cassino while standing with his arms raised up to heaven, supported by the brothers of the monastery, shortly after receiving Holy Communion. So when St. Benedict died, he was standing right in front of the altar with his arms up in prayer, and his monks were holding them up, and he died there on the spot, which is very interesting. Um, also, his sister was St. Scholastica, who founded... Uh, or who helped found and lead um, Benedictine nuns. So Monte Cassino, um, below here, says Monte Cassino, 1880, from Holy Monte Cassino, 1880, and it's in the Latin. It's all in Latin. Everything on here is in Latin. Marking the 1400th anniversary of St. Benedict from 1880. So on the reverse side, we have the actual exorcism prayers that can be used. It starts out with um, going down. On the back of it, the cross is dominant, and on the arms of the cross are the initial letters of the Latin exorcism prayer that any lay person can say. Crux sacra sit mihi lux, non, non draco sit mihi dux. So this stands for, may the holy cross be my light, may the dragon never be my guide. And around here we have Crux Sancti Patris Benedicti, Crux Sancti Patris Benedicti, Holy Cross of Our Father Benedict. Um, above it says Pax, which means peace. And then around the margin it has Vade Retro 
satana nun cum suade mihi vana sunt mala queli baseps evenia bibas which means get back satan never tempt me with your vanities what you offer me is evil drink the poison yourself again this poison reference going back to the time saint benedict was almost uh, killed by the poison cup that he shattered which is also depicted here it is non in nunquam can be interchangeable so when you say crux sacra sit mihi lux non draco sit mihi dux you could also say nunquam draco sit mihi dux and then for this you would say varia satana this is always, 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 always nunquam, this n. So vadaracha satana nunquam swadi mihivana. But this one is interchangeable. I typically call it um, nunquam, but I've heard people say non. It doesn't matter for this. It's non draco, the dragon not be my guide, or n the dragon never be my guide. Because here, um, non is no, n no. So the dragon not be my guide. But you could also say nunquam, which is never. Uh, so, never be my guide. Um, the actual translation says, may the dragon never be my guide. So, technically, you should say nunquam for this. Because if you say nunquam, it means may the dragon never be my guide. Whereas if you just say here, may the dragon not be my guide, it's not that it's not as well. So I would say for this one, I always say nunquam. Um, and this one, you have to say nunquam. Um, because th this translates to never tempt me. You wouldn't say no tempt me. You can't say non. Um, non suade. You, it wouldn't make sense. You would say nunquam suade. Mihivana. Um, so I would just say both. So anyways, that's the prayers. So we're going to go into the uses of this medal. There is no special way prescribed for carrying or wearing your medal of St. Benedict. It can be worn on a chain around the neck. Here's my neck chain that I wear, that I made. It can be attached to a rosary. Or it can just be attached to a crucifix. It can be kept in a pocket or a purse, so you can keep this anywhere on you. And it can be placed in your car or your home. If you put it in your home, if you put one of these in each of the four corners of your house, it'll do a special protection for it against evil. Okay. The metal is often put in the foundation of houses or buildings, of the walls, barns, and sheds, or in a place of uh, one's business to protect it from evil. You can also put this in your pillow and it'll protect you from having nightmares and bad dreams. As opposed to a dream catcher, that is um, satanic and uh, superstition. Whereas this actually brings the power of God through the priest who blessed it um, into the room and to protect your dreams. So the purpose of using this metal in any of the above ways is to call down God's blessing and protect us wherever we are and upon our homes, possessions, uh, etc., especially through the intercession of St. Benedict. By the conscious and devout use of the metal, it becomes, uh, as it were, a constant silent prayer and remind a reminder to us of our dignity as followers of Christ. The metal is a prayer of exorcism against Satan, a prayer of strength in time of temptation, a prayer of peace among ourselves and among the nations of the world, a prayer that the cross of Christ be our light and guide, a prayer of firm rejection of all that is evil, a prayer of petition that we may, with Christian courage, walk in God's ways with the gospel as our guide, as St. Benedict, Benedict urges us, and a profitable, profitable spiritual experience can be ours if we take the time to study the inscriptions and representations found on the metal that I just described earlier. The lessons found there can be pondered over and over to bring true peace of mind in our, into our heart and lives as we struggle to overcome the weakness of our human nature and realize that our human condition is not perfect, but that with the help of God and the intercession of the saints, our condition can become better. The Medal of St. Benedict can serve as a constant reminder of the needs for us to take up our cross daily and follow the true king, 
Christ our Lord, and thus learn to share in his heavenly kingdom as St. Benedict urges us. In, in his role, in his regula, which is the, the little book depicted there, I do have copy. Uh, I do have a copy of the regula as well, um, which is a, a thin little book you can get. Um, they're pretty cheap, but it has everything. So here are two special uses of the medal. By a rescript of the Sacred Congregation of Religious, in 1965, lay oblates of St. Benedict are permitted to wear the medal of St. Benedict instead of the small black cloth. So if you're an oblate, you're a lay person who works with the Benedictines, but you're not a monk. You do, um, do daily prayer as an oblate, and usually you have to wear a black scapular, but now you can wear this if you're lay oblate. Um, if you're interested in becoming an oblate, I could direct you to someone who knows how to get you in touch with your local abbey, but anyways. Um, and by a decree of the Sacred Congregation of Rites in 1959, the blessing of St. Morris over the sick is permitted to be done with a medal, an exercise medal, instead of a true relic of the cross. So in the Latin uh, Roman ritual, there is a specific blessing called the blessing of St. Morris over the sick, where you take a Benedictine monk can do this, and he takes a piece of the true cross and blesses the person. But those are almost rare to find. They're only in Pittsburgh and the Vatican and a few other places. So what to do is they switched it with, you can use a St. Benedict medal. You can wear the medal with your scapular. Um, they usually come on a lot of scapulars. Um, so yes, you can wear the medal with your scapula. Okay, so here are the uses of the medal. This is what everybody's always interested in. So there are eight main uses of the medal. To destroy witchcraft and all other di di diabolical haunting and influences. To impact or to impart protection to persons tempted, deluded, or tormented by evil spirits, to obtain the conversion of sinners into the Catholic Church, especially when they're in the danger of death, to serve as an armor against temptation, to destroy the effects of poison, including food poisoning. What you can do is you can dip it into um, liquid before you eat, or you can do the sign of the cross or the prayer uh, over it, you can do that over anything, but it has a special protection against poison because of the poison that I was talking about earlier uh, with the cup and um, St. Benedict making the sign of the cross. Crux sacra sit mihi lux, nunquam draco sit mihi dux, vadera cessatna, nunquam suade mihi vana sunt mala quale basip se venena bibas. Now, vadera cessatna, uh, VRS, is the get back Satan, be gone Satan, is the biggest prayer of exorcism that we can do. Um, I actually, at one of the local Latin mass parishes that I attend, in the big stained glass, it says, Vadericha Satana, get back Satan. Uh, the sixth one is to secure a timely and healthy birth for children, to aff afford protection against storms and lightning, and to serve as an e efficacious remedy for body afflictions and protecting against contagious diseases, protect from illness, sicknesses. So there's eight uses. Um, again, as I said, you can put a metal in each corner of the room. And uh, so you could use four of them in a room and that'll have the same similar effect as an epiphany blessing over the door, which would be uh, 20 um, Christus Mansionis Benedicat seven, uh, 18. Um, 2018 door blessing it has a similar effect of if you put uh, four so it blesses it so um, we're going to actually go into how to bless it for this to work for any of this to work it must be blessed and exercised by a validly ordained priest Everything that I just said is just a piece of metal. It's literally just a piece of metal if the priest does not bless this. If the priest does not correctly bless this, it's, it doesn't work. So I'm going to show you exactly how it is blessed so that you can get a priest to do it, and I will provide links to the, to the prayer from the Roman ritual so that you can go to your priest, hand it to him, and have him bless these for you once you get them at online, Amazon, eBay, any Catholic store.
every single thing that I just said in this entire live stream is on a link on my website. I literally just read off of the link that I typed. So everything that I just said is on a link on my website that I will put up. If you go to my website, which is in my bio, it says the first thing on the front page, it says newest link. Click that. If you click that, it'll take you to everything that I just explained here and give you these prayers that you can take to a priest. Once again, I have taken this to priests to, to see how they bless it, and they literally go like this. Done. That is not the correct form. Uh, for, for something to be valid, it has to have f the correct form, and the correct form is part of the words. So here is how a priest would actually bless and exercise the St. Benedict medal so that you know how it should look, so that when you take this to your priest, he can do it. So what you want to do is the V's are the priests, the R's are the responses. Um, note, the English is also included here. So when I, when you go to the link that I sent you, that I posted on that, that link, uh, to download the actual prayer, the English is here too. The English works, but the Latin is preferred. So... We uh, Note, what I am about to say, only a priest can say for it to be valid. I am not in any way implying that I can put any power over these medals because I am not a priest. So this is just me reading through this as a prayer. I am not doing anything. I am not doing anything of this because I am not the correct minister. Uh, the correct minister is a validly ordained priest. The correct form is this. The intention is to exercise, and the matter is the metal. You have to have all four present for it to be a valid blessing and exorcism. Remember, minister is a priest. Form is these words. Matter is this, and the intention is to exercise them. So we're going to start. You make the sign of the cross here. Adiutorium nostrum in nomine Domini, qui feci cerem eterum. Exorcisio vos numismata per Deum Patrem Omnipotentum. Anytime you see the plus, make sure the priest has a sign of the cross over it. It's also in the English version here. Qui feci cerem eterum, mare et omnia quae in eus, eis sunt, omnis virtus adversari omnis, Exercitus diabri et omnis incursus omne phantasma satane eradicare et effugiare ab his numismatibus ut fiant omnibus qui eis usori sunt sarus mentis et corporis in nomine patris omnipotentis et Jesu Christi Filii eus Domini nostri Spiritus Sancti Pericliti et in caritate eustem Domini nostri Jesu Christi qui ventorus est judicare vivus et mortuos et securum per ignem and then you respond Amen. Note, um, anytime it says Jesu Christi or Jesus Christ uh, in the English, bow your head. Bow your head. The priest should bow his head. If he doesn't, you, you have the right to say, uh, Father, can you bow your head? Then uh, we go into the Kyrie. Kyrie eleison, Christe eleison, Kyrie eleison. Now you read the entire Pater Noster. Make sure the priest says the entire Pater Noster. Uh, that means inaudibly until. So. Pater nostri qui es in ceri, sanctificetor nomen tuum, adveniat regnum tuum, fiat voluntas tua, sicum celo et in terra. Panon nostrum quotidianum de nobis odie, et dimite nobis debita nostra, sicut et nos dimitimus debitoribus nostris, et ne nos in cas in tentationum. And then you respond, sed libera nos amaro. Sarva fac servos tos, Deus meus sperantes in te, esto nobis domine tuoris for Fortitudinis a facie inimici, Dominus vertutem populo suo dabit. 
Dominus benedicet paporum suum in pace, mite nobis domine auxilium de sancto, et de sion tuare nos, domine exaudia rationem meum, et clamor meus ad te veniat, Dominus fobiscum, et cum spiritu tuo. Oremus, Deus omnipotens bonorum animum, omnimum, logitor supreces te rogamus ut per intercessionem sancti benedicti his sacris numismatibus literis ac char caracteribus a te designatis tuum benedictionem in fudas in fundas remember uh, the, the sign of the cross here ut omnes qui ea Gest haverint ac bonis operibus intenti fuerint sanitatem mentis et corporis et gratium sanctificationis atque indulgentias nobis concesas consequi merantor mereantor Omnes quae diabri insidias et frades per auxilium misericordiae tui effugere variat ent in conspecto tuo sancti et immaculati appareant per Christum Dominum nostrum. Amen. Oremus. Domine Jesu Christi, remember to bow on Jesus Christ, qui vorus voluisti pro totius mundi redemptione de virgine nasci circumcidi a uh, iudies repobari iude oscuro tradi vincurus vincuris aligiari spinis coronari clavis perforari inter latrones Crucifigi, lancea, vonerari, et tandem in cruce mori, per hanctum sanctissimum passionum, humilitar exoro, ut omnes diabricas insidias in frades experas, ab eo qui nomen sanctum tuam his Literis ac caracteribus a te designatis devote invocare vuit, et cum ad salutis portum per ducere dignaris, qui, vi, qui vivis et regnas in secura securorum. You respond, Amen. Benedictio de omnipotens pat. Tris et fili et spiritu sancti descendit super hec numismata ac ea gestantes et maniat semper. And you respond, Amen. And then the then they are sprinkled with holy water. So make sure you have holy water on you or bring holy water. The Our Father is actually optional because if you look at the short form of it, if you go all the way through, the Paternoster is removed. Now that will be on the link that I will provide for you to download to give the priest um, who can then say it in English or in Latin. Just make sure he knows what he's doing because if he messes it up, then it doesn't, it doesn't become exercised. So now, if you have one of these... If the priest did the entire thing and did not let you do the responses and he did them and he did not bow, it's valid. The words have to be said. Four things have to be present. Form, matter, minister, and intention. If his intention is to exercise them, if it's a validly ordained priest as the minister, if the form is the words that he's reading from here, if the words that he's reading is okay, it's valid. Um, so if you have one of these, here's a little disclaimer. If you have one of these, if you have one of these, if you have one of these, anytime there's a crucifix involved, you have to get the crucifix blessed in exercise separately. So first he does the little circle part in here. He does this. Now the priest can do all of this at once. He can do all of this at once. So you can have, you don't do 
one the time it's just he can read the entire prayer and when he does a sign of the cross his intention is to consecrate all of them make sure the intention is to consecrate all of them but if you have one of these he also has to bless the crucifix separately so how do we do that well i've included on the link the blessing for the crucifix um it's right here but we're going to go through it just in case so here we go make the sign of the cross you do the r's Adiutorium nostrum in nomine Domini, qui feci cerem et terum, Dominus obiscum et cum spiritu tuo, oremus, ragamus te, Domine Sancte, Pater omnipotens eterne Deus, ut digneris benedicere, don't forget the cross, hoc signum crucis, ut sit remedium, remedium, uh, salutare generi humano, sit solidati, soliditias, Fide profectus banorum operum redemptio animarum sit solomen et protexio ac tute, tutela contra sue seva iacura inimicorum per Christum dominum nostrum. Uh, pe, si, uh, amen. Uh, make sure you do the. Amen. Uh, the priest can do this as well. Um, Benedic Domine Jesu Christi. Remember to bow at Jesu Christi. Hunc crucem perquem eri puisti mundum a potestate deamonum et. And this, this right here is the exorcism of the, the crucifix. Be gone from Satan's grasp. Deominum et superasti passione tua suggestorum peccati qui gadebat in prevaricatione primi omnis per ligni ventici supsionum. And then here it is sprinkled with holy water, so make sure you sprinkle the cross with holy water again. Sanctificetor hoc signum crucis in nomine Patris et de Filii et de Spiritus Sancti ut orantes inclinantes coe se propter dominum ante istam crucem inveniat corporis et anime san sanitatem per iundum Christum dominum nostrum and then finish with Amen and then the priest um can kiss the crucifix um it says here and you might you may you can kiss the crucifix now that that part's not part of the form but um it's but you should so both of those prayers so if it's if it's just these medals he can go like that do the entire blessing of the medals but if it's if it's one of these He's going to have to do a separate one for the crucifix and then do the actual exorcism of the metal. So, um, this does not, this is not a metal, so it doesn't have all of the, it, it's not blessed, it can't be, it's, same with this, same with this. These are just um, printed on, this is my bag, this is my hat, this is my water bottle. Camelback actually made this, I was very surprised, but... Um, these things are not metals, so they can't really be blessed or exercised, although you can do a blessing on them, it, it doesn't do anything. So these aren't doing anything, but the rest of these, the rest of these things are. Um, so we're going to go to my laptop right now. So this, so if you go to my homepage right here, If you go to my homepage and you click newest link right here, you click newest link, you'll get you'll get taken to Saint Benedict Exorcism Medals. And every single thing that I just said in this live stream, um, for the most part, is exactly here explained that I typed up for you all to read and then if you get down to the very bottom 
it'll say right here, Latin English Exorcism. And here it is, right here. Here's the Latin, here's the English, and then here's the Latin again, here's the English. It's two pages, two pages of Latin or two pages of English. You bring this to your priest, and he'll know exactly what to do if you, uh, if you help him. Um, and then if you download the other link, give me a second here. If you download the other link, it'll say cross blessing. This is if you have a cross, and here it is right here. And I put this all up uh, last night, and I typed up the this. It has the uses of it and everything. So St. Benedict Exorcism Medals. Uh, so other than the Paternoster, what other things are common mistakes? So common mistakes that priests will do are, now these... The, just doing this uh, won't do anything. The priest, the priest will think that he has the power to just bless things, but this has a specific blessing reserved to the to the order of ben Saint Benedict, who then uh, allowed other priests to do it. But if a priest it just just goes like this, he's doing it out of ignorance or pride because he's skipping over blessings that have been approved by the Vatican. So just doing that. And the other one is forgetting the Paternoster. Um, that's not, that doesn't affect the validity, but he really should say the Paternoster, um, or the, uh, the Our Father, if you don't know what that was. Um, other common mistakes is they don't bow at the name of Jesus, they don't make the sign of the cross when there's a plus, um, and other ones, they forget the holy water, and other ones, um, if they do this, they'll just do the, the, exorcism of the metal, but they won't actually do the second one for the cross. Uh, those are the common mistakes that I see when I'm uh, having priests do this and mispronouncing. If if they try the Latin and they're not used to the Latin and they mispronounce something, their intention and the form was correct. It was just the pronunciation. It still is valid. Bless these. Now you can get these on... Amazon, on eBay, on any Catholic website, or any Catholic store, they're everywhere. Bowing, crosses, and holy water. Holy water does not affect the validity at first. So, if the priest has no holy water, but he does the entire prayer over it, it's good, but it still needs holy water. So you can take it home and put holy water on it. Um, it just it has to have the holy water. Now you sh should be using old right holy water, which has exercise salt in it. Uh, I will be making videos on how priests can do that. God doesn't care if your pronunciation sucks because he can he can understand what you mean and everything, and things can be done in other languages um, as long as the words are still there. But if you're doing, like, against demons, if you go and say, for vade, vade retro satana, get back Satan, that's um, the V-R-S here. If you're doing that to tell Satan to get back, and you mispronounce it, and you say, like, vade retro satana, it, the, he's not even going to listen to that. He's going to laugh at you. The, Satan's going to laugh at you if you mispronounce this, right? So the demons laugh at you and don't listen when you mispronounce Latin. But if you pronounce, if you mispronounce it when you're doing the as a priest and doing the prayers, um, the, God will still make it valid because he understands.